Welcome to this week's Holohan's Hot Topics. Dr. Sherry Berger here with Dr. Melissa Holohan. Hey, Dr. Holohan, what's happening in the world of critical care this week? Hi, Sherry. Well, this week I chose a study looking at the evaluation of two point-of-care ethylene glycol tests in dogs. This is something at our emergency hospital that we see uh, pretty often, and it's very difficult in some patients to get an accurate reading. We used to have availability of human methods of testing, but unfortunately, due to a lot of laws now, we're not able to give dog samples to human hospitals, so we've had to come up with better point-of-care testing. And so ethylene glycol is certainly a common toxic exposure in dogs. We typically see ethylene glycol toxicity secondary to antifreeze or coolant exposure. However, there are some solvents and household products that can also contain a small amount of ethylene glycol. Um, however, if dogs ingest enough of it, it could be toxic. Ingestion in dogs typically causes neurologic signs. So early on, you may see ataxia, disorientated. A lot of these patients um, are lethargic, and they can progress over time to a stupor or coma state. Intoxication um, can lead to acute kidney failure in dogs if it doesn't go recognized early and is not treated um, early in, in the um, ingestion phase. So intoxication may be suspected in dogs based on history. Certainly that's very helpful if we know that there was exposure or the patient was actually seen to be drinking antifreeze. However, there are some times where we have to rely on clinical signs and laboratory findings. And so what we're typically looking for in dogs is the presence of a metabolic acidosis. A lot of times we can see an increased anion gap, high glucose, high phosphorus, and a low calcium in some patients. And this is typically due to the formation of calcium oxalate monohydrate crystals. And those are typically the dumbbell shaped or the picket fence shaped crystals that you may see in the urine. However, the gold standard diagnosis is done with gas chromatography, and unfortunately, this test typically takes about three to five days to get back. So it's not going to be very helpful as a point of care test for our dogs when we need to treat them within hours of exposure. So that's why this study set out to look at the two commercially available point of care ethylene glycol tests that are available in dogs to date, and they compared this with the gold standard testing. We were hoping that by this test, by this study, we could find a clinically applicable test for early identification. And so both of these assays are designed to detect ethylene glycol levels as low as 20 milligrams per deciliter. This study looked at 10 healthy university um, dogs in a teaching hospital. And this study was actually done in vitro. So what they did was they drew blood from 10 dogs then they took the blood and spun it down. They took the whole blood after centrifuge and separated into plasma. And then at that point, they used the plasma and mixed it with varying concentrations of ethylene glycol. So this was a test tube study. And what they did with the concentrations was they prepared the samples, they randomized and blinded the samples to the authors, and then the samples were scored as either negative 20 to 50 milligrams per deciliter or greater than 50 milligrams per deciliter. And then both of the tests were evaluated based on sensitivity and specificity for detecting, detecting the ethylene glycol calculated. Results of this study showed that the KC ethylene glycol test strips had excellent sensitivity and specificity, and, and both actually were 100% in detecting ethylene glycol. They had good agreement between both readers, and there were two different readers on both tests. However, the vet spec ethylene glycol test was less sensitive and specific, and there was some variation between both readers. So the sensitivity, about 65% in the first reader and 95 in the second, and the specificity was about 70 or 40, depending on the reader. So what this study concluded was that the KC ethylene glycol test strips had the greatest accuracy and ease of use. And this is certainly, to date, probably the most common ethylene glycol test that we have available in, in veterinary practice and the most commonly used. And that's because they 
come in very nice uh, small bottles of five test strips to a bottle. The shelf life is about a year and a half, so that's pretty convenient if you're not seeing ethane glycol in your hospital very commonly. And they're very easy to do. If you've ever seen both of the tests, the KC ethane glycol is literally a test strip, whereas the vet spec is a variation of um, centrifuge and spinning down the bottles and looking at color variation. So I'm not surprised that there was a difference between the two readers. Um, in agreement. So we typically use the KC ethylene glycol test. However, certainly both could be used in your practice. And that's all this week on Hollihan's Hot Topics. Thank you.